the instructions the Buddha gives start with the phrase that you establish mindfulness. That means you make up your mind. You're going to keep certain things in mind. You're going to keep remembering, stay with the breath, stay with the breath. And not just stay with the breath. Try to find a way to make the breath as comfortable as possible, as inviting as possible, so that it's a good place to stay. After all, we're practicing mindfulness for the sake of concentration. And concentration starts with a sense of ease and well-being, sense of refreshment. So what kind of ways of breathing would feel refreshing right now? Keep that in mind, that that's what we're here for, to feel refreshed by the breath. So that if you find that it's becoming mechanical or tedious, stop. Remind yourself, the breath is the force of life. Without the breath, we'd be dead. And it only stands to reason that if the breath feels good, it's going to be good for the body and good for the mind. You're providing yourself with both healing and protection. Healing in the sense that whatever wounds you have in the mind from past days, things that had you upset, things that had you worked up, the breath can soothe those things, calm them down. It's like a cream that you put on a rash. You put the cream on there and then you let it stay. The same way when you stay with the breath and the breath is calming, it helps to heal the wounds in the mind. And this protection, when you get the mind in a good place like this, you're much less likely to do or say things or think things that are going to be harmful down the line. So you're healing past wounds and you're protecting yourself from future dangers. So it's good to keep these things in mind. Because an important part of mindfulness is ardency. And ardency means being motivated to want to do this well. So there will come times when you have to give yourself pep talks to remind yourself of why this is a good thing. But it's all to the good. Then when the mind can begin to settle down and receive a sense of well-being right here, right now, that's when you see that the effort put into being mindful, the effort put into being ardent and alert, they all pay off. They all have their rewards. Take note of that so you remember it the next time around. When the breath gets tedious again, the mind gets bored. Ask yourself, what can I do to make the mind more interested in the breath right now? Because actually there are a lot of interesting things happening in the mind right now, and interesting things happening in the breath. When you get bored, it's because you're not paying attention. You're not asking the right questions. You can ask yourself, what other ways can the breath move through the body that would feel really good, feel really satisfying right now? So take an inquisitive attitude in addition to being mindful. You're here to learn, and there's a lot to learn in the present moment. Someone once said to John Lee, what is there in the breath? All there is is in and out, in and out. Why do you teach people to focus on the breath? And as he responded, he said, well, if that's all you see, then that's all there is. The implication being that there's a lot more that's going to depend on your ability to ask the right questions, take an interest into what's going on. And that attitude of interest will help nurture your mindfulness, nurture alertness, reward your ardency. This is how the mind gets established as a whole.